come. Here they come. far more enjoyable and way less cold. What's that, Angie? If we took them by car, like my own car. <laughs> now, let's break this one down in stages, shall we? First, a uh, drive is not a walk. Okay, I'll give you that mm -hmm. one. Second, and quite crucial, I might add, you don't have a driver's license. Technicality. Next. Next. This car you desire it would have to be bought and paid for. I assume you have enough for a down payment? Me? You. You have money saved, don't you? Put it to good use. It's never too early to become a woman of independent means, like your mother. Mom, how is she independent? She has a husband and kids and a job that doesn't pay that great. Look, Angie, although it's yeah. true that once you have dependence, you lose a little independence, but your mother has always done things on her own terms. Oh, she oh. has a master's degree in business and economics and... And, and could have gone anywhere with that. So why didn't she? Because she chose to devote herself to her family. That's all very nice, Daddy, but I still don't see the independence part. Mm -hmm. You want to know a sure sign of your mother's independence? Yes. She's the only person allowed to say no to these morning walks. <laughs> oh, I feel terrible. I feel like I'm coming down with a cold. Morning, family. Morning, Morning Mama. <laughs> Oh, you poor thing. I wish I could stay home and take care of you, but I have to do an emergency fill-in for Mr. Deusterhoff at the bookstore. Uh, that's odd. It's not like old Dusty to change the Saturday schedule at the last minute. I wonder what's up. Something about an important business meeting. He said he'd stop by on his way to fill me in. That must be old Dusty now. Hey, it's a term of endearment. Besides, <sighs> I'm not well. Understatement. <laughs> You're selling the bookstore? I'm sorry, Norm. Mr. Tremblay is making me an offer I cannot resist. Oh, you mean like in The Godfather? That was an offer he couldn't refuse. What could possibly possess you to give up the store? It's your whole life. No, Norm. The store was just a pleasant companion to pass the time with. But I'm afraid we've said all we have to say to each other. You talk to your store? That's weird. Maybe you need to get out more. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes, eh? But she's right. It's time for me to retire. I'd be a fool to pass up the opportunity. But the bookstore is an institution. One cannot stop progress, no. There has to be some way for me to persuade you not to do this. Why don't you buy the bookstore yourself, Mom? <laughs> Your mother buy the store? Be serious, Angie? I am serious. You said yourself how far she could have gone with her business degree. So why shouldn't Mom be a woman of more independent means? <laughs> well, I merely told you that to illustrate... Me buy the bookstore. Angie, that's a wonderful idea. Say what now? If I buy Mr. Deusterhoff out, I can maintain its integrity and charm. <laughs> While making a few minor improvements to keep up with the current trends. Uh, but and before you know it, the store will have more than paid for itself. Bingo! You just said the two magic words, paid for. Now, 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 how do you propose to pay for this business venture? Oh, Arthur, we'll think of something. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. Yes, but whose lifetime? <laughs> Okay, Mr. Deusterhoft, you go to your meeting and tell that Mr. Tremblay that you're entertaining another offer. I'll hold down the fort at the store. I hope this works, Norma. I know what you're going to say. Oh, I was going to say, I, I, I believe in you and support you 100%. Thank you, Arthur. <laughs> Uh, are you sure we can pull this Don't off? Don't worry, I'll figure it out. We'll have to do a little belt tightening huh? around here for sure. <laughs> Lie down. I'm feeling a bit tapped out.
And this other prospective suitor has the necessary capital to consummate the deal? Well, no, not exactly yet, Mr. Tremblay. But I have high hopes in her ability to raise it. High hopes? Mr. Dusterhoff, look around you. Do you think I gained all this on the basis of high hopes? At some point in your life, Mr. Tremblay, yes. All right, Mr. Dusterhoff. Here's what I'm prepared to do. Twelve hours to raise all that money? That's right. Mr. Tremblay gave Mr. Dusterhoff a twelve-hour deadline. If I don't raise the counteroffer by then, Mr. Dusterhoff has to accept his deal or he'll take it off the table. No, 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 no. We, we, we can't touch the house or any of our savings. <gasps> ah, that's too risky. I know. I'll have to formulate some sort of a makeshift business plan and start making calls to investors. It's a long shot, but I'm stuck here at the store. I wish I can do more. <laughs> Sounds like mom's in a real tight spot. I wish there was something we could do to help. Maybe we can. I have a few bucks saved. Plus, I can go out and wash cars to raise more. How about you, Angie? You have anything to kick in? Well, where did all your savings go? I have no idea. I have $47.13 in my piggy bank. Right. Where did you get $47.13? I saved it. Maybe you should try doing that, too. Hey, I know what I can do. I can go down to the bookstore and fill in so Mom can run around and raise money. I'll even get Sky and Carmel to help me. Well, that'll solve Mom's problem. But by the time you three finish, there might not be any bookstore left to buy. Expert detailing, huh? Okay, expert, let's see what you've got. Hey! Oops, sorry, I'll take a dollar off. Make that five dollars. I appreciate your pitching in on such short notice, girls. <laughs> Remember, Saturday's usually low pressure, so just be cool and try to get through the day. Yes, yes Mrs. Mrs. Billy Bean. So, how's it coming so far, Mom? Well, there's not much I can do with the bank on a Saturday, but I did manage to couple together a makeshift business plan. I'm off to make a sales pitch to your grandfather, and then I'm seeing a couple of my old AKA sorority sisters who might have some interest. Hmm, good luck. Thanks. And remember, this is a business, not a fun house, so no fun. Don't worry, Mom. We'll be miserable. Good. So, who wants to be miserable first? Oh, please. Hello? Hey, Jerome. Nothing, just kicking it at Auntie's mom's bookstore. Yeah, come by and holler at us. It's cool. Carmel, my mom said... Oh, please. Oh, please. Hello? What's up, Trey? Yeah, we're down at the bookstore. Drop by. Drop by? Oh, can you believe that she... Hello? Nate? Hey, a few of us are getting together at the bookstore. Come on down. A few of us are getting together? Hold on. Hello? Hi, this place isn't so bad. Excuse me. Excuse me. So you see, Lester, the amount saved in the first year cost-cutting moves will facilitate the phase two upgrades and improvements. By the third year, investors should be seeing a return on their money plus dividends. Should be. Isn't that Will B's poor cousin from across the tracks? I meant to say, will be. Lester, I know this all seems like a lark, but it will work. Trust me. <laughs> you don't have to give me the hard sell, daughter-in-law. This looks like a fine investment opportunity, but not for me. But... Don't fret now. Uh, let me get my buddy Henry on the line. This kind of thing sounds right up his alley. Three years. She needs how much? Yeah. Yeah, I think I can break off a little piece of that. Uh, that's right, I'm all in. Read him in a week, boys. Henry's in. You are well on your way. Oh, yes, but I only have six hours left. Hello? <laughs> oh, Arthur, you sound terrible. Nah, I'll, I'll leave it. How goes the fog drive? It goes about as badly as you feel. Your father's friend Henry was about to go all in, but he seems to have experienced a sudden shortfall in funds. Henry, are you at the poker game? Afraid so. Norma, get out of there. Henry's not playing with the full deck. Unfortunately, I found that out too late. Are the kids letting you get some rest? Surprisingly, yes. Uh, <clears throat> Roy's gone out and uh, Catherine's been so quiet you think she was out awake. <laughs> This is great. 
gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you. It's gonna hurt Guinness too. Mr. Bummy can't even look. Don't blame me, Mr. Bummy. It's a sad, sad day. But first, let's take a minute to reminisce about the good old days. I remember the very first quarter I put in you. It was worth 25 cents. There, all done. I don't think so. And that one, and that. And that. What on earth is going on in here? Uh, hi, Mom. I know what this looks like. It looks like fun, which I specifically told you not to have. No, Mom, it's not like that. Everybody's been totally cool. I've sold six books today. Plus, once everybody started showing up, I sent this guy down to the store to get some punch. Kids are buying it for a dollar a cup. Punch? What's in the punch? Punch. So far, we've made $27 for the cause. Everybody's rooting for you, Mom. You go, Mrs. B. I appreciate you wanting to help, Angie, but $27 isn't going to do it. I brought two of my sorority sisters down to look at the place. They have money to invest. Do you know how embarrassing this looks? Sorry, Mom. Unprofessional. Oh, my. Your heart was in the right place. J just get these kids out of here so I can conduct my business, please. Hey, everybody. We gotta go. Like, now. <laughs> this is, this is great. You never find out. <laughs> Ladies, I'm terribly sorry for this misunderstanding. Well, that didn't go well. I don't know why your mom had to be stressing so much. We were just showing our entrepreneur spirit. Yeah, and kicking it with some fine boys at the same time. Holla! <laughs> yeah, well, $27 and kicking it aren't gonna help my mom's cause. But I see something that will, okay? <laughs> there, Mr. House, that. Now that is what I call expert detailing. Next time, I'm gonna put car wash on the side. I could have done 10 cars in the time it took me to polish an SUV. Son, you've just learned an important lesson in truth and advertising. Great, but that's not gonna help my mother. Your mother, is she sick? Well, it's like this. There's something my mom wants more than anything else in the world, but she's gotta get it today. Then yesterday, I put 23 cents in you that I found in the couch, and that's it. Okay, I have to smash you now. Goodbye, chops. Now the fun stops. The money comes out when the little pig drops. Huh? What's that you say, Mr. Bummy? Check his tummy? Mr. Bummy. Never mind, Chops. You're safe. Some left for dessert. <laughs> That's good. I could use a few laughs. 
So the day did not go well? No, my sorority sisters wouldn't cough up a cent after seeing Angie's teenage dance party. It was a silly idea to begin with, Arthur. This is way beyond our means. Nonsense! You deserve this, Norma. Where's the old Bindleleaf spirit? Oh. oh, I wish I knew. Mommy, look at all this money I got in Chuck's belly for you. I didn't even have to smash him. I gathered up all my savings, too. Plus, I watched this man's SUV all day long, and he gave me triple my fee. <laughs> Sounds like a very nice man. I wish I could thank him myself. The girls and I took part in the karaoke contest for $500. Ouch. Well, the important thing is that you tried, dear. Hello? We won. Honey, I must be sicker than I thought. I could have sworn Angie said... That? That's right. We won the contest. Here's the cash plus the $27 from selling punch. I hope it helps, Mom. Oh, my. I don't know what to say. I do. There's the old Bindleby spirit. Good work, family. And now, I'm going to do my part. I am going to get dressed and go with you to beg for more time. I've got to stand by my woman. Arthur, you can barely stand, period. You need to rest. Nonsense. As patriarch of this family, it is my solemn duty to step up to the plate in a time of need. I'm with Mom on this one, Dad. You're completely out of it. I assure you, Angie, that I am in complete control of my facilities, of my faculties. Arthur? That's the pantry. I know, I know, I know. I, I gotta get my strength up. Don't I? So you see, Mr. Tremblay, your short deadline put me in quite a spot. But I'm quite certain that I can match your offer if I have a little more time. Really? Mrs. Bindlebeep, do you know who you're dealing with here? Do you not understand that I could easily double my offer and leave you in the dust? That's all, old Dusty Sellings, or... Come back, Dusties. You'll have to excuse my husband. He's a little under the weather. And yes, I'm well aware that, frankly, I'm already in the dust. I was kind of hoping you'd find it within yourself to pick me up and brush me off. Mrs. Bindlebeep, I don't make my living by letting others cut in on me at the dance. I make it by recognizing an opportunity, seizing it, and expanding it beyond its potential. Mr. Tremblay, I acknowledge that you are a great businessman. But with all due respect, we are talking about books. Not some latest, greatest fad to be exploited for a quick buck. Perhaps this year's superstores are gaining market share, but how long can that trend last when they all line their shelves with the same bestsellers and celebrity book club picks of the month? It's just a matter of time until the public grows tired of seeing the same titles everywhere they look, and heaven forbid grow tired of reading. Somebody once said that books can be divided into two classes, the books of the hour and the books of all time. At Doosterhoffs, we specialize in the latter by approaching our business with a personal touch, a human touch. It's what our customers expect and what they challenge us to provide. I implore you, don't disappoint them. You can't take away the old building alone, Mr. Potter. You, you, you just can't. Mr. Potter? Who's Mr. Potter? I... Sorry. I understand that the bank is the principal lien holder on my store. And my opinion on the completion of the sale of this is just that, an opinion. But that opinion is that Norma should be the one to keep the bookstore going. Thank you, Mr. Dusterhoft. I don't have much, but I am prepared to put up some of my own saving toward Norma's bid. Show me a figure. I'm afraid this won't get the deal done. Then I guess you're right. The bookstore will be another lucrative notch in your belt. Mrs. Bindlebeep, you weren't listening. I said it could be another lucrative notch in my belt if I proceed with the deal. And I will. But only as a minority partner in your investment group. What? It's unorthodox for me to operate in this manner, but your business plan is sound. And you strike me as being a formidable entrepreneur in the making. I'm going to put up the rest of your money, provided that you do certain things my way. Congratulations. Norma, this is wonderful. Arthur, did you hear? The store is mine. Huh? Oh, uh, uh, well, well, uh, that's great. Uh, I'm glad I could help. Mr. Tremblay, thank you. You're the best. Well, I'm not bad. But I can't polish a car like your son, Roy. 
Can you believe that Mr. Tremblay made me do that whole song and dance before telling me his decision? And you did well. You sure you don't want a performing career instead? All you have to do is have Roy polish some big music producer's car. No, thanks. Mom, you have to make it on your own from now on. I don't want to see another SUV as long as I live. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Mom, now that it's your bookstore, you wouldn't consider hiring some part-time help, would you? I'll even defer my salary until the store starts making money. Well... Consider yourself hired. Really? Of course. We women of independent means have to stick together. Can I work at the bookstore too, Mom? But I'm not going to defer my salary, okay? When your kids attend the same school, you can count on a little awkwardness. But when your kids attend the same school you teach at, count on a lot of awkwardness. See for yourself in new episodes of Fatherhood, every Tuesday at 9, only on Nick at Night.